Hello. This video is going to showcase how to use the many PLS Pole customizations that are available directly in PLS CAD. These tools are intended to make sure that structure models at each site represent what is actually built, considering the local terrain and any other maintenance or rehabilitation that has taken place since the line was initially built. By staying in PLS CAD, your workflow can be streamlined and some of these tools can be applied to a full range of structures in one go. In order to allow for these customizations, we've introduced the concept of site-specific structures. These are copies of the main or standard structures that are unique to the position or location of that pole. The easiest way to spot a site-specific structure is to look at the file name of the structure. You will see that the structure's number has been inserted into the file name of that pole. PLSCAD also tries to flag you that site-specific structures are present, and this is done under the Structures Modify button. You'll see that the structure number and line angle has been highlighted a light or pale purple color. And similarly, if you go to the Structures Staking Table, any structure position or row will be highlighted in that same pale purple color. To create a site-specific copy, we use the menu command Structures, Customize Structure, Make Site-Specific Copy, for a single structure at a time, or make site-specific copies to be applied to a range of structures at a time. Alternatively, anytime you apply one of the customizations that we're going to discuss, you will be prompted to make the structure a site-specific copy. If you find that surveyed conductor positions are different from those on the standard structures, you can move the location of attachment points up or down the pole. This tool can be applied on all structure files, methods 1 through 4. In some cases, you may have classified survey data with a unique feature code for the attachment points. It's then very convenient to accurately snap any movement to these structure points. To use this command, select Structures, Customize Structure, Move Attachment Point, Snap to Survey Point. Once you activate this tool, the mouse will now snap to the wire attachment points on your structures. Once you locate the attachment you wish to adjust, click and drag your mouse towards the survey point you wish to snap to and release your mouse button. You will now be prompted to make the structure site-specific via the Customize Structure dialog. Here you can select to make modifications to the original standard structure, which will be applied to all instances of the file, or you could make changes to be site-specific. You can also adjust the new file name and location where the file will be saved. We recommend using the default settings for the file name and saving structures in the structure directory, which is set in file preferences. When you click OK, the attachment point is moved as required. You can continue to adjust this same structure or any other structures using the same tool to better match your survey points. If you do not have a specific feature code or you want a little bit more flexibility in placing the attachment points, you could rather use the Structures, Customize Structure, Move Attachment Point, Freehand command. Now, once you have selected the wire attachment point, you click and drag the attachment point upwards or downwards along the pole. When you release the mouse, the attachment point will be placed at that location instead of snapping to the closest survey point. While either of these commands are active, you can always toggle between the wire attachment points or the insulator attachment points. This is done by pressing the I or W keys as prompted in the status bar. If you want to, you can also apply this command to all of the attachment points on a range of structures at one go. However, in this case, it will only work on allowable span structures that is method one or two structures. Select structures, customize structures, move attachment point, snap to survey attachment points, multiple structures. This will bring up the snap structure attachments to survey attachment points dialog. Here we select the feature code and insulate a set that we want to consider moving as well as specifying a maximum distance that we will allow the attachment points to move. You can either get the results in the form of a report for checking, 
prior to making any of the changes, or you can apply the changes directly, depending on your needs. The last option we control here is whether or not to snap to the wire or the insulator attachment points. Or you can let the software try and attempt to decide based on the type of insulator on each given structure. When you click OK, the command will attempt to run. However, you might get a warning here if you have not already made your structures site-specific. If you have not, you will be afforded the chance to make them site-specific before the attachment points can be moved. By pressing cancel at this dialog, you are taken straight to the make site-specific structure file copies dialog. This is analogous to going to structures, customize structures, make site-specific copies that we referred to earlier. When you run this command, you can select the range of structures to make site specific and we have the option to save a unique loading file LCA format with each new structure and where we save the new file with the original structure file or in the structures directory. Once these structures are site specific, we can customize them and rerun the move attachment point command. After inputting the same parameters, the structures will be updated and we will receive a report documenting any changes made to the structures. The next tool we want to look at is moving guy anchors. Standard guide poles are typically modeled assuming that they are being placed in flat terrain and if the structure can handle a range of deviation angles, then the guy wires are usually aligned for this maximum deviation angle as it will often produce the largest loads. However, when constructing guide poles or designing lines, the above assumptions are often not correct and we need customizations to make sure that the guy anchors fit in the correct location. Please note that before we start this, these tools will only shift the anchor point, which is the point on the ground. If you want to change the position of the guy attachment on a pole, you would need to use the structure, modify, and edit command. The first two commands under the structures, customize structures, move guy anchor menu are snap to a survey point and freehand. These are very similar to what we used when moving attachment points up or down the pole. If your field survey provides coordinates for the, the guy anchor positions, you can accurately snap to these points. You select the guy wire you wish to move, click and drag it towards an appropriate survey point. For a little bit more control or flexibility, but possibly less accuracy, you could rather use the freehand tool to move the guy wire. Again, you click and drag the guy into any position you wish and release the mouse. These commands adjust the guy slope and the guy azimuth, but they also adjust the elevation of the anchor point to either coincide with the selected survey point or to the tin surface when you use a freehand move. You will note that as you are adjusting the guy wire, the guy you select will be highlighted red. However, if a particular guy being adjusted has its location defined relative to another guy, it will be highlighted in purple. If the guy wire being adjusted is the reference guy of another anchor, then it will be highlighted in green. Moving a reference anchor will make sure that the anchor's reference to it will move along with it. And that is what is noted in this uh, dialog menu here. However, if you move a anchor that is referenced by another anchor, then you are noted that moving that anchor may break the relationship between the two guy wires, so they may move independently after this. Inline guys or bisector guys can easily be placed by using the next three tools in this move guy anchor menu. With the inline with wire option, you can select a guy and then by moving your mouse around, you select an appropriate wire for the guy to be in line with. By default, the guy will be positioned to counter 
balance or oppose the selected wire span. If you press the F key on your keyboard, it will flip the guy wire around 180 degrees to be in the same direction as the wire. This is noted in the status bar. The inline with alignment movement tool is very similar to the inline with wire tool, but it follows the alignment and not the individual wires. There are times when the wires and alignment are oriented differently, and so you can choose which is appropriate for your needs to best balance your loads. At a line angle, you can select a guy wire and make sure that it is placed directly on the bisector by using the bisect line angle tool. With this tool, the guy wire will have its azimuth automatically changed to bisect the line angle. Please note these three tools will only change the guy wire azimuth. The slope and anchor Z elevation remain unchanged. The last tool in this menu is the slope intersect with tin tool. There are two options here. We can apply this to a single selected guy wire at a time, or we can apply this to all of the guys on a selected range of structures at once. As mentioned before, guys are normally placed in the pole model assuming flat terrain. And so to ensure that your guy wire anchor positions are placed in the correct position on the actual ground surface, this tool is invaluable. I will only show adjusting all of the guys for a range of structures. So select structures, customize structures, move guy anchor, slope intersect with tin, all guys for a range of structures. Then click on, on one of these structures. Here you can select a range of structures to apply this to if you wish. Thereafter the tool will run and you will be presented with a report that shows you what the adjusted length of guy wire needed, whether that's an increase or decrease in length. And the structure file has been updated accordingly. The next set of tools are to move pole elements. These three tools will keep the structure coordinates unchanged in PLS CAD, that is your station and offset, but rather will edit the position of the pole within the PLS pole file. The first two tools are familiar by now. We can snap to a feature code if we have an available field survey, or we can move poles around freehand for more flexibility. The last option is more interesting. This tool allows us to lean pole elements interactively to match a selected survey point within PLS CAD. This will assist in simulating the purposeful raking of poles or any leaning as a result of inadequate planting depth or under compaction, depending on the founding conditions. To use this tool, you select the pole element and then move your mouse towards the desired survey point to define the inclination of the pole. You will see a schematic of the lean as it is being done. When you click on the survey point, the X and Y inclination of the pole in the PLS pole model will be updated to match the anticipated inclination. Please note this tool will not change the embedment of the pole to match the selected survey point, so you may need to provide an embedment constant or percentage override in PLS pole to achieve this. The next customization tool allows you to correctly align arm elements. Your options are to rotate the arm to ensure that it is either perpendicular to the wire section or perpendicular to an alignment. Here the arms were pre-rotated inside PLS pole and are evidently incorrect. To use this tool, select structures, customize structures, move arm, perpendicular to wire or perpendicular to alignment. Then select the arm you wish to rotate and you will then select the alignment or wire that you wish it to be perpendicular to. This tool can place arm elements a little bit counterintuitively and the arm might well appear on the opposite side of the structure from what you had intended. Pressing the F key 
as guided by the status bar during the operation, will flip the arm's position 180 degrees and you should then arrive at the solution you want. There are two tools that allow you to make changes to insulators in PLS CAD. The first tool is Structures, Customize Structure, Insulators, Change Insulator. This tool will, will allow you to change the specific insulator selected. This has to be from the component library of available insulators that are saved with the structure file. This will only work on Method 4 structures. It won't allow you to change the type of insulator, but will allow you to change the particular set of properties for that insulator. This could be useful, for example, if you have re-insulated a pole structure during any maintenance event, perhaps from glass or porcelain discs to be a composite long rod. Please note that it changes all the insulators in the set to the same property. The next tool is structures, customized structure, insulators, move guy insulator. This will allow you to graphically select and move a guy strain insulator on a structure. You have the ability to move this insulator along an existing guy or to move it onto another guy on the same structure. The final tool allows you to freehand rotate framing elements around poles. Select structures, customize structures, framing, rotate freehand. Then select the framing element you wish to rotate graphically. This is a click and drag to rotate tool. And when you release the mouse, the framing element will be placed in that current orientation. Although it is freehand, you can obtain a little bit more accuracy by using the snap settings to snap to specified angle increments. When the tool is active and you are busy rotating an element, hold down the space bar and this will snap to the specified increments as you rotate. Pressing the S key will allow you to enter what angle increments you wish to consider. In closing, I just want to mention an option that will trigger a structural check after a customization is applied if that customization can impact the structure's usage. Please just be warned that this can add significant time to your analysis or modeling if you are running in higher levels of SAPs. So use it with a bit of caution. By selecting Structures, Customize Structure, Report, you can generate a report that will document any difference between the original and customized structures that are derived from them, so you can see what modifications have been made. If you'd like more information about our software, please see our website at www.powerlinesystems.com or contact us at info at powerlinesystems.com. To receive a quote for purchase or renewal of your license, please contact sales at powerlinesystems.com and for any technical inquiries, please contact support at powerlinesystems.com. Thank you for watching and for your interest in our software, the industry standard in overhead line design.